Welcome back to World Spotlight TV. Today we will look some of the The British Royal Family's 10 Most Cruel Moves. Before continuing, please take a moment to like, share, and subscribe to this channel. Being a member of the British Royal Family isn't as easy as it looks. You can't be political, controversial, or show emotion. And any slip-up you do make will be all over the news across the globe in very short order. The Queen Mother's motto was, never complain, never explain, but when words fail, actions can speak louder, and those actions can be passive-aggressive or just plain ruthless. Here are 10 examples of when a royal let their guard down. Number 10. Taking a ride with the Saudi Prince. Queen Elizabeth II enjoys driving. During World War II, she worked as a truck driver as a second subaltern in the Women's Auxiliary Territorial Service. She is not required to have a driver's license as queen. Former Saudi Ambassador Sherard Cooper Coles recalled Crown Prince Abdullah's 1998 visit to Balmoral. After lunch, the queen suggested a tour of the Scottish estate and directed her guest toward the Royal Land Rover. The Crown Prince sat in the passenger seat and was surprised to see the queen in the driver's seat. She started the engine and sped around the winding roads, chatting with the prince the whole time. Eventually, the terrified prince was forced to ask her to slow down through his interpreter. It could be a coincidence, but women were prohibited from driving in Saudi Arabia at the time. The prince survived his spin with the queen, and in June 2018, Saudi Arabia's driving ban was lifted. Number 9. The Trial of Paul Burrell Paul Burrell was a personal footman to Queen Elizabeth II and then went on to work for Princess Diana. The two formed a close bond, and Diana allegedly referred to him as, My Rock. After her death in August 1997, Burrell quickly rose to fame. He became a regular on TV and took on a high-profile role with the charity set up in her name. The world's press were out in force, to report on the story. However, on day 9, the case was adjourned. The judge, Mrs. Justice Rafferty, sent the jurors home with no explanation. The following day, they were again told to stay home. Meanwhile, the Queen, who had been unaware of the case, had seen a news report about the trial. She then recalled Burrell telling her that he had Diana's possessions stored safely in his home. The police were informed, and Prosecutor William Boyce, QC, told the court there was no longer a realistic prospect of conviction. Burrell was free to go, outside the court, he famously said, the Queen came through for me. This brought an abrupt end to what many predicted would be a lengthy trial full of royal secrets. A spokesman for Buckingham Palace said, there is no question of the Queen interfering. Diana's possessions were returned to her family, and Burrell continued with his media career. The royal family have never commented on the case of Diana's missing things. Number 8. The Queen Puts Mrs. Thatcher in Her Place Margaret Thatcher became the first female Prime Minister of the UK. Together, Queen Elizabeth II and Mrs. Thatcher were the most powerful women in the country. The Queen was often irritated by Thatcher's habit of turning up early for their meetings and had been heard referring to her as, that woman. When Thatcher suggested that she and the Queen should match their outfits for an occasion, Buckingham Palace responded, the Queen does not notice what other people are wearing. Number 7. Royal Nanny Out in the Cold The first rule of working for the royal family is, keep your mouth shut. In 1932, Marion Crawford was employed as nanny to Princesses Elizabeth and Margaret. Over the years, Crawford became such a trusted servant to the royals that she stayed in service until 1948, when Princess Elizabeth became engaged to Philip Mountbatten. In 1949 the American Ladies' Home Journal approached her for a piece they were writing on royal children. Queen Elizabeth, the Queen Mother of Elizabeth and Margaret, thought it would be a good way for Crawfi to earn some extra money. There was a strict understanding, however, that she would be anonymous. The article was full of sweet anecdotes from the royal nursery and perfect for the American public. But when the magazine hit the stands, there was one glaring mistake. Marion Crawford was named as the interviewee. The Queen Mother was furious and instantly blamed Crawford, 
saying that she had gone off her head. The family severed all ties with Crawfy, who moved back to Scotland and never got over the rejection. She suffered from depression and attempted suicide twice. She kept the letters from the Queen Mother giving her consent to speak to the magazine locked away. Even though they could have cleared her name, she refused to release them. Marion Crawford died in a nursing home in 1988, still hoping to hear from the royal family. In her will, she requested that all personal letters be returned to the palace for safekeeping. The royal family have never mentioned her again or the role she played in shaping the future queen. Number 6. Diana's Rage. After his divorce from Diana, Charles employed Alexandra, Tiggy, Legberg, a well-connected young woman, to help care for his sons. Tiggy's job was to be a fun older sister rather than stern nanny, and she quickly formed a close bond with the princes. Their mother was not impressed with Tiggy's role. Tensions grew between the two households, and soon, Diana began to suspect, wrongly, that Tiggy and Charles were having an affair. Diana seized upon a false rumor doing the rounds that Tiggy had gotten an abortion. Diana made an appearance at a staff party in December 1996, strolled up to Tiggy, and allegedly said, so sorry about the baby. Tiggy instructed top libel lawyer Peter Carteruck to write to Diana's solicitors demanding an apology for the offending remark. Tiggy continued to work for Charles until 1999, when she left to get married. She has remained close to Princes William and Harry. Number 5. The Attempted Kidnap of Princess Anne. Princess Anne is known to be a strong character, and this was tested to the limit when Ian Ball attempted to kidnap Queen Elizabeth II's only daughter. On March 20, 1974, the princess, her husband Mark Phillips, and bodyguard were traveling in a royal limousine. Ball, a 26-year-old unemployed man from London, drove and crashed his car into the royal's vehicle and then jumped out, bearing two handguns. Anne's bodyguard approached him and was shot in the shoulder. Anne and Phillips tried to hold the door shut. Anne's chauffeur approached Ball, only to be shot in the chest. Ball fled toward a park but was caught and arrested. Police found handcuffs, Valium, and a ransom note addressed to the Queen. The note demanded that two million pounds be delivered in person by the Queen and stated, and will be shot dead. Ball was sentenced to life. All those who came to Anne's aid survived. Number 4. The Death of a Princess. On August 31, 1997, Princess Diana was killed in a car accident in Paris. The news of her sudden death caused shock around the world. Diana, as ex-wife of Prince Charles, had lost her HRH status in their divorce. The media picked up on the public mood, and stories about the coldness of the royal family began to appear along with scenes of public anger. The royal family stayed on holiday, and the flag stayed at full mast the night before the funeral, the Queen made an unexpected speech on TV and paid tribute to Diana. Number 3. Farewell, Britannia. Some of Queen Elizabeth II's happiest days were spent with her family on the royal yacht, Britannia. Britannia was also used for the Queen's private family holidays and was the place she felt most at peace. At the time, the royals were being criticized for the cost of works at Windsor Castle after a fire. Tony Blair, who was the new Prime Minister made it clear that he would prefer the money to be spent on public services. So in December 1997, Britannia was decommissioned. Queen Elizabeth and Princess Anne stood at the dock and openly wept as Britannia was sent to become a tourist attraction next to a shopping mall in Edinburgh. Number 2. An Awkward Meeting Queen Elizabeth II was very close to her cousin, Lord Mountbatten, who became a mentor to the young Prince Charles. In 1979, Mountbatten was killed and a terrorist bomb exploded on his boat in Ireland. His grandson, 14, and a local boy, aged 15, were also killed. The IRA claimed responsibility for the attack. Martin McGuinness was a former IRA leader who later became Deputy First Minister of Northern Ireland. In June 2012, the Queen made history when, 
on a visit to Belfast, she met and shook hands in public with McGuinness. On their second meeting in 2016, when he asked her how she was, she responded, well, I'm still alive. Number 1. Sitting pretty. Marrying into the royal family can be tricky. Even if you are accepted, your family may not quite match their requirements. When Kate Middleton married Prince William, her family were thrust into the spotlight. A few weeks later in September 2016, the Middletons were invited to stay at Balmoral as personal guests of the Queen. I sincerely hope you enjoy this video. If you have any requests or recommendations, just leave a comment below. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to this channel.